Hey, hello, welcome to the Canary and Crown. My name is Natalie, and today I'm gonna to be doing a deep dive on the home of King Charles III and his wife, the Queen Consort, Camilla. Today we're talking about Clarence House. Now I've done deep dives on other royal residences in the past. If you wanna take a look, I've done a deep dive on Frogmore Cottage, I'll leave that up in the cards, as well as Adelaide Cottage. So this is just the next installment. So if you enjoy this video, please go ahead and check out the playlist of all of my royal home coverage. So yeah, today we're gonna to talk about all things that have to do with Clarence House, the history, when it was built, the past occupants, the two, we're gonna do a tour of the inside. We're gonna talk about the furnishings, the art, and just all things related to the house. So I hope you learn um, something from this journey. I certainly did. And let's get right to it. Clarence House was constructed between 1825 and 1827. It was designed by John Nash as the home for King George III's eldest son, Prince William Henry. At the time, Prince William Henry was also known as the Duke of Clarence, thus the name Clarence House. When Prince William became King William IV, he continued to live in Clarence House for the remainder of his reign. After he passed, his sister Princess Augusta moved into the home and stayed there for approximately three years. Other famous residents of Clarence House include Queen Victoria's mother, the Duchess of Kent. After the Duchess of Kent passed away in the 1860s, Clarence House then became home to Queen Victoria's second son, Alfred, the Duke of Edinburgh. Like some before him, he made renovations to the home, specifically building a Greek Orthodox chapel for his wife, Maria. Later, Queen Victoria's third son and his wife moved in and did some redecorating of their own. During World War II, Clarence House actually suffered some damage from enemy bombings that took place during the Blitz from 1940 to 1941. Following the death of the last royal occupant, Arthur, it was used by the Red Cross and the St. John's Ambulance Brigade as their headquarters for the remainder of World War II. The next royal occupant of Clarence House would be Queen Elizabeth herself, although at this time she was still a princess. She moved into Clarence House in 1947 following her marriage to Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. They lived in the house for several years and at the time it was in need of some huge renovations, including the addition of some heat and hot water heaters. Now, there was still some more time rationing and restrictions in place, so all of their updates needed to be quite modest. This is not the first time that King Charles has occupied Clarence House. He lived there as a small child from the age of one to about three years old, and actually his sister Princess Anne was born at Clarence House. After the death of her father, King George VI, Queen Elizabeth moved her family to Buckingham Palace. After that, the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret actually took over residence of Clarence House. After Princess Margaret married in 1960, she moved to apartments at Kensington Palace. However, the Queen Mother retained her residence at Clarence House along with her other residence in Scotland, the Castle of May, until her death in 2002. Today, Clarence House still very much honors the taste of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, in the morning room in particular, and you'll see throughout the house her pieces of china and her painting collections. That brings us to Clarence House's current residence, King Charles III and his wife, the Queen Consort, Camilla. King Charles started renovations on the property in 2002, bringing it up to his likings. And he actually did accommodate much of his grandmother's furniture and kept it in the home, but made some updates. And then Camilla joined him in the home. They lived there since 2003, and it was actually the residence of Prince Harry up until 2012. Now, Harry mentions this in his new memoir, Spare, saying that after he moved out, Queen Camilla turned his um, bedroom into a dressing room. And he said at first he didn't want to care, but when he saw it, he cared. 
The way that the home is situated today is that there are private sitting rooms on the first floor along with the rooms that are used for meetings and events. And then there are those rooms that are open to the public one month a year that you can actually tour. And those are the rooms that I am going to walk us through today. And then on the second and third floors are the private offices, bedrooms and living spaces of the king and the queen consort. Now, it's important to note that when Prince Charles became king back in September of 2022, he opted to stay in Clarence House, although Buckingham Palace is being renovated and should be finished by 2027. So we'll see if he does decide to move into the Buckingham Palace at that time. So I am gonna walk you through some of the first floor rooms of Clarence House, but it's important to know that Google did an amazing job with a culture and arts tour of Clarence House, and you can actually find that online. I will leave the link in the description below so that if you wanna learn more and see even more, that you can check that out as well. So let's enter through the gate that is off of the street and into the front entrance of Clarence House where you step into a beautiful long hallway where at the end of the hallway there is a grand staircase that can often be used by the king and queen consort to deliver remarks when they have gatherings at the house. This is the Lancaster Room, a drawing room with a central fireplace and views of the garden that's shared with St. James's Palace. The room is filled with an assortment of trinkets, antiques, and books from around the world and all crowded into bookcases. The design of this room is very similar to how it looked when the Queen Mother lived there, but the walls have been painted with a calmer cream. The morning room is probably one of the most recognized rooms in the home. It was designed as a breakfast room, but between 1949 and 1952, it was used as the Duke of Edinburgh's study. Family photos and special events such as Prince George and Prince Louis' christening have been taken in this room. The plaster in the ceiling depicts Queen Elizabeth's crown and the large windows face out to the garden. King Charles is passionate about organic farming and gardening, with his gardens at Clarence House being no exception. The gray or dirty water from the house is used on the garden so that nothing is wasted. This means that specific soaps and cleaning solutions must be used. There are also private beehives located on the Clarence House property that were given to the king as a gift on his 70th birthday. The library is an interim room between the morning room and the dining room, which has been used as a reception room for informal gatherings and features a central table usually set for tea. This is where the Christmas tree is set up each year. The garden room features a grand piano and a gold harp, and it offers views of the garden. In addition to the Queen Mother's porcelain and a portrait of her that hangs in the dining room, there is also a bust of her on a table in the garden room, so she is still very much present at Clarence House. Thanks so much for watching today's deep dive of Clarence House. If you guys made it this far, thank you so much. I would so appreciate it if you did all of the YouTube-y things like liking the video and subscribing. I would be forever grateful. And don't forget that if you love this kind of content, you can also watch my Royal Homes playlist and see more. I hope to see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.